All right, we are about to get into the semi-final match here of Dominate Dominion number 101. We do have our chat bands, and we will be getting into champ select very soon here. The chat bands so far, we have Janna, Leona, Jax, and Mundo. We have a lot of targeted bands here today. We have Janna targeted at our favorite supportal, Mad Supportal, a.k.a. Zyme Mike, the premier support player for Dominion. We have Leona Band and Dr. Mundo, which are both directed at Zounds. Very, very strong tree line player who took a couple uh, tree line tournaments under his belt when they were in existence. And we have Jax Band, which is a band directed at Sam in his very, very strong laning phase. Although Sauron is also known for Jax, it seems that Farming Group is going to opt to get rid of it. It appears so. All right, we get into the picks and bands here. Let me get these chat bands up on the screen for you guys. Perfect. All right. So, uh, let's see. Um, they did ban out the Jan already. I'm expecting a Lulu ban because there is a Mad Supportal, a.k.a. Z-Mike, on the enemy team there. Let's give a quick history of these champions are being banned real quick. We have Mad Support. This is a new team over here on Purple Team. We have veterans from the game. You may or may not have heard them before. We have Sauron. An ELO king, he had the most ELO back when it was still uh, tracked. He has been in the Dominion scene since its inception. We have Sifu Calvin, another veteran from the very, very beginnings of Dominion. Still comes around every now and then. He's a very, very strong player. He plays a lot of bruisers, plays a lot of mages. He's very all-around good per good player. We have Matt Supportal, who plays supports. He's been picking up a little Zyra, a little Annie here and there. He plays a little bit of Brand. You know, he, he does mages and support. He thinks we have Snipes, Nindle, the... New kid on the block, the new ELO king, if you will. He's been playing and has had a pretty big uprising, and his friend forgot the icing. He's also along the team, playing his own part. He plays the tanks for today, along with the bruises. And over on Zound's team, 3v3 player, he's here with all of his 3v3 buddies. We've seen movement before. We've seen Sam. Sam, known for playing his bot lane 1v1 champions, plays a little bit of Jax. He plays Trundle. plays a lot of lane bullies. plays Renekton. We have Zound, plays the tank's top lane for his team. Got Puncho, who we're looking forward to seeing. This is his first time playing a Dominion turret that I know of today. And we have Doomadora, who is also a first-timer. But we know movement, he plays a little bit of mages. He also has very, very good mechanics. He plays Vayne on the level of Bebepop. Yes, all of these uh, 3v3 players over here are challenger in 3v3. So they do have good mechanical skill. But the difference between having the mechanical skill and winning Dominion tournaments is you need to have the map knowledge. And Zounds, Movement, and Sam all are very well versed. They've been taking first, second, you know, top tier team for a while now. And adding on these extra 3v3 players, we're going to see how that works out for them. Because they and do we... have the mechanical skill, they hopefully have the shot calling to go with it, they should be able to make something happen. Now, wait, something very interesting in picks and bans happen. Purple team has banned Lulu because there is there are multiple trees players that do play Lulu and I know Sauron has a perpetual hate for that champion. So since they do not have first pick, even though they have Mad Support, they did ban the Lulu out. They definitely banned the Kha'Zix out. He is the number one most broken champion across all game modes right now. Except for maybe a round that could be the exception, but he is banned everywhere. Yeah. Now we have Zounds first picking up the Nidalee. What do you think about that, Fancy? <clears throat> that Nidalee pick being really strong, you mentioned earlier that they do have the uh, the wards with Maokai, but with Nidalee you have the traps, it'll shred your armor 40% and your MR, and those spears and poke just hurt so much. Um, she's very mobile, she can get around, she can gank, it's just a very strong champion on the map. But over on purple team here, for the first time we're going to see him in tournament since his changes, we do have that Thresh pick. The first time the Thresh was not banned out. It wasn't first pick, but it was picked second round, and it is going to purple team. Now, I have seen Sauron playing a little bit of bot lane Thresh. I know all these players know that Thresh is, a, you know, an A-tier champion overall. He's B-tier when he gets the time, but he is S-tier when he gets ahead. He can have 300 souls by 15 minutes. That's like about 280 on hit damage. Very, He can be a very, very explosive champion. Now we have them picked up LeBlanc as well. That's probably going to go on Sifu, Calvin, or Side Sentinel as their assassin players. And we have Talon and Vi picked up for the blue team. What about that, Sam? 
Talon and Vi are a very, very good combo. They are great together and great solo. Vi is really good at dueling things one on one, and as is Talon instantly jumping onto those squishy targets and blowing it up, Talon is actually a very good pick into the LeBlanc because it is one of her most dangerous uh, opponents to go against. He can get onto her before she can get away, silence her, and blow his burst to blow her up. Um, you do have the Vi for the good engage in case the enemy team tries to come in on you. Talon for blowing stuff in, up when they come in. And really with this comp, they want to focus on keeping Nidalee safe in the back and able to throw spears. And they're actually going to be opting to pick up an Amumu for this comp as well. And I'm assuming that's going to be Sam playing Syndra bot lane. Hmm. We see an Amumu which is going to really have the hard CC that the comp really lacks. It brings the team fight all together for blue team. And then hovering over Syndra, which is a very, very solid bottom laner. But one thing people don't normally do is pick Syndra in, in bottom lane into a Pantheon, because Syndra is very, very vulnerable to gank. We see it locked in anyway, and we're going to have to pay attention to that, because if Syndra gets behind or gets gank, it can be very, very problematic. Now, one thing that Sauron does like to do is play bot lane LeBlanc. Now, this I is don't true. know if he's going to bot lane LeBlanc into Syndra, but they could have, even though they had counter pick per se for the purple team on purple side, that LeBlanc pick could have been an early pick for bottom lane, leaving Sauron an option of, hey, do you want this top or can I take it bottom? And it seems to be the case as we see Morgana as the final lock in against Vi. Morgana probably most definitely going to go, I would think, to Snide or Mad Supportal. It seems like they're going to put Supportal on the tank. Maokai, they have forgot the icing on the Pantheon. The very mobile ganker and the bruiser which is much of his style you have sifu doing his signature thing playing leblanc he is very very he is a person who will sit in the bottom lane all the time and sauron opting to take the thresh into bottom lane and that is going to be a very very interesting bottom lane a lot of the outcries of thresh being too strong have come from bottom because he's able to just sit down there and collect the souls at will you know he doesn't have to put himself out into danger he can farm safely and because he gets so much armor from his passive, he can just build pure MR and become an unstoppable tank. Um, but then again, over on blue team, they do have the assassins ready. They have that Vi, they have that Talon. They're going to be able to jump down there and gank him before his souls can get up to that critical mass level. But at the same time, Sifu is on his LeBlanc. And we have seen, uh, it's been a while since you guys have seen Sifu LeBlanc, but I... Remember back in uh, tournament days going against Sifu and that LeBlanc, it was not fun at all. And we do see both teams actually opting to bring Clairvoyance along. Is that something that the high-level teams like to do a lot now? Uh, Clairvoyance had a time, had its time in the meta. It kind of felt, it's fallen in and out of favor multiple times. It seems that they're both going to opt to bring it back because they are very, very volatile assassins. And if you can... Find those assassins, see when your bot lane's going to be able to be ganked, see where they are on the map. It can prompt the appropriate reactions for your team and the opposing team. And, you know, you can defend yourself better being able to have a little bit more vision, being able to face check. Well, you don't have to face check that many brushes when you bring along CV. Yeah. Now, what I do want to note is bringing on Morgana is going to, is, that Morgana is there to simply like black shield the vial. Uh, that, that's really her main job. In these team fights, she can land very good bindings. If she catches Talon, Pantheon will absolutely destroy him. Bindings are very, very important. And Snide is a very, very good person on a sniper. If you have come across his Lux in solo queue, it is very, very terrifying. It's the same premise on Morgana. The more important thing I want to note here is Syndra is a very bad matchup. It's a very good matchup against Thresh. While I don't think Domodora is probably going to come into this knowing the matchup, if you know, and I know Sintaran has played a lot of Syndra in his time, which is he probably feels confident going up against it. I do believe Domodora should absolutely destroy, destroy this Thresh in this matchup. Yeah, the major thing with Thresh in this matchup bot lane is he gets shoved really, really easily early on. In the early game, it's very difficult for him to push the lane back, especially with a long-range mage like Syndra. She's going to be able to poke him down, she's going to be able to shove the wave, uh, she's going to be able to build it up and eventually neutralize that tower. Um, but I have played against Sauron's Thresh bot lane with heavy wave clear champions before the changes, and he is very good about holding his tower and keeping it safe for the entire time. Uh, eventually you might just get bored and try to dive him and he'll just kill you because he's Thresh, 
But um, it is going to be a very interesting match here. You, do, you did mention the Morgana with the Black Shield to stop any of the CC coming through and making sure uh, things stay safe. LeBlanc is going to be very, very safe from silences, from violts, from mummy snares. Everything will keep her away, or keep her safe with that Black Shield. Um, and then Sam also having that Nidalee. Morgana's Black Shield gets to about 500 plus by the time endgame hits. And those spears aren't going to be eating HP, they'll actually be eating the Black Shield, which is a very, very good thing to have. It's also worth noting that Sauron does occasionally play top lane. No. There are... No, you're, you're there, kidding. There are oddball times. I, I, I don't know. I, I have seen Sauron on very rare occasions play top lane. But he is very well known for his bot lane mechanics and his bot lane dominance. Um, if he goes top this game, I'll be very surprised. Because uh, I know he's a pretty big fan of running the Thresh and running Thresh bot lane if he is going to run it. I don't know. if he bro I would not be surprised if someone was going to throw a curveball at their team and run Thresh top. Because either way, they're going to be magic damage heavy. If you decided to play... Blanc bottom or Morgana bottom, but he probably is going to be taking Exhaust Thresh into the bottom lane against the Syndra, and I'm very looking forward to seeing how this goes for him, That'll regardless of where he is on the map. Very, very interesting to see. Uh, remind me one more time, what is this this collaboration of high MMR Dominion players again? What did they name their team? The name is Farming Group Simulator. Oh, that's right. 2004, and they will be playing on the purple side up against up against bench warmers. But I accidentally named both teams farm sim. <laughs> so, let me get that fixed for you, stream. There we go. Now, comp wise, I honestly think the comps are very, very even. Assassins. You know, they're, if you think of chess, they put each other in check in team fights. They either both go in, they go in on, they either both go in on a target, or they go in on each other. And in either situation, they're expected to both do the same thing, and that's kill somebody. Whether they kill each other or they kill the target that they go on. I would say Talon has is better off. He generally puts LeBlanc in a better check than uh, LeBlanc would put by himself, but Talon really has issues. He cannot go within the zone of Maokai's W, twisted his band, and he cannot go within the zone around Pantheon that is his stun range. So, I yeah. mean, he has areas that he has to be very, very careful of stepping into because he will be instantly focused and killed if he does happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He also has to be very careful about how he applies his burst in team fights, because Maokai is on the enemy team, so he can just pop that ultimate of his and cut a lot of damage. And 25% of an assassin's burst is quite a bit. That could be the difference in you killing a target or you not killing the target. And with when you're playing that assassin, killing your primary target is always your first objective. Now, on the other flip of the coin, the LeBlanc... Because she has Black Shield, as long as the Black Morgana has the Black Shield and doesn't have to use it on herself, she could be absolutely fine against every single thing on Blue Team. Yeah, she can jump into the fight, she could eat a stun, she could eat a Vi Punch, she could eat a Talon Silence, and she will be completely okay. So, and it does look like Sauron is going to be running that Thresh bot lane. Hopping to start with a Kendall Gym. Probably going to go into a very, very quick Spirit Visage to... I'll mitigate some of the damage coming out by this Syndra, who is going to apparently run straight at him. Nice. But we have top lane poke going down, Maokai saplings being tossed, doing a ton of damage. Max range spear manages to hit the tree, though. That feels painful. And I'm actually curious, Sam is... Okay, he was already level 4. I wanted to see if he had leveled spear twice at level 3. Oh, and the oh, mummy going right in. The boss. Fully charged Volt Breaker comes in, Sifu goes down very, very quickly, movement being focused on the other hand, Pantheon goes down, Trees having very, very good target focus for the team. Finch Warmers, ooh, Whoa. a mighty <laughs> fly on the back end, Snide with the snipes I was talking about, but it seems like he's going to be pushed away with Finch Warmers coming out ahead. Everybody blowing revives, though. So, are we going to have to revive, uh, or rename Snide to the Sentinel Sniper? Because that binding was freaking insane. 
Pining still hitting, manages to pick off Talon, forgot the ice and going to stun Stan, but he gets all of the bursts from movement and downs in the process. And it looks Another like... spear hitting takes down Icing in the back. As the fight keeps progressing, Icing's down twice, and Amumu gets popped. Amumu will go down. His revive is also down, so he is not going to be able to come back up. And everyone else is here. And I don't know how this fight is going to be really, really close. It's going to depend on cooldowns and what damage gets out. Oh, the spears are just chunking so hard right now. Damage being traded back and forth. Snide with the binding. Oh, and man. she goes down. It looks like bench warmers are going to end up taking this one. Aside is still caught up here. Sam hits six. He uses his cat form, gets away from the binding. Zounds blows his ultimate questionable decision in order to get that kill on a level five Morgana, but gets it nonetheless. And the shutdown gold. So very nicely done there. Yeah, and LeBlanc could not help. She was completely out of mana, too low. One spear would have just completely finished her off. So very wise to back out of that situation there. And looks like they're setting up in the jungle here, trying to see if they can catch a gank. But uh, uh, it doesn't seem like uh, Farm Simulator is going to fall for that one. They're keeping to the far right of their jungle, making sure. Oh, and Pantheon ulting, heading into bot, going to go be uh, be going for that Syndra. And there's the Pantheon gank coming in. Syndra's very vulnerable to ganks, but she gets down her ball. There was no death sentence up for Sauron. It was on cooldown, so there was no particular follow-up, and Syndra's just going to get away scot-free. And he did miss that flay. I, I have dealt with Thresh's flay the past week, and sometimes it's a little wonky if you're not used to playing him all the time. So, and it looks like big group here trying to catch that Nidalee out of position while she's warding. Is he going to be able to get the chains? He's he will. He's going to get the chain down, but he cannot keep it as movement was threatening to throw a bandage toss his way, and he had used both distortions. Meanwhile, there's a fight going on between Talon and Syndra and Pantheon with the storm buff, and it seems like Pantheon and Thresh are going to get the better end of that Talon going down. They are going to be able to finish that off, and Sifu Calvin looking to come down here and get a gank as well. But Tree right now... The initiation coming up top, Amumu gets his ult down, Tree goes down along with Morgana. Trades oh. everywhere, Sifu harassing the Syndra on the bot lane point. Meanwhile, Zounds, Movement, and Sam are chasing, and they're going to get icing while Saren's fighting. Zounds charges the full breaker, hits it, but are they going to chase Saren all the way to the base? It seems like it. Will they get him? Oh. They are going to back off. Bench Warmers taking a commanding lead in this early game as they have Nidalee set up in the jungle. Traps are being put down. They have vision and they're able to prevent 2004 from coming up and penetrating the jungle all the way to the top point. Yep, and it looks like they're going to be trying to get a four-man push going here. Nidalee has not been able to go B. She still only has that uh, codex as well as the ring. Zound's getting caught in the jungle, just a simple Pantheon stun into a LeBlanc follow-up, and he went down, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And ooh, the oh, the nice bandage. Bang, going for a YOLO banish toss, hits Icing, pops the exhaust, but is getting all the damage from Sifu. Another spear comes in, Sifu pops back to where he was before, so he is perfectly fine for right now. Italy gets jumped on by... Ooh, the by Pantheon over the wall. Pantheon comes over the wall, Sam not taking care of his position. He gets found by Sifu, who the minions managed to finish. Ooh, the Sifu Finch jukes. Should quit while they're behind before they end up losing any more people. And Mad Support will get to be running through the jungle here on that Maokai, just stepping on traps, trying to clear him out. You don't want those to sit on the map. They sit there forever, and you don't want that vision to be coming up late game and dealing more damage as she starts to level up those traps. Zounds finding the tree in the jungle, giving him a good punch, but Snipe blowing all of his buttons on this talent. And ooh. ooh, dodges out the binding at the end. He's gonna get out of there. Alts for alts traded. I don't know. Talon's cooldown on his ult is a lot shorter than Morgana's. So I think that was a pretty uh, decent trade there. And here comes the gank from Sifu, blowing up that Syndra bot lane. Meanwhile, we have movement, getting a banish toss on Massive Portal. Binding flies Larry one more time. Spear hits. Ooh. And it seems like a move is going to get sniped. Meanwhile, forgot the icing is going to blow up Zound for disrespecting him. And the whiff of Moo Ulti is real. Syndra blowing revive in the bottom lane decides to trade with Sifu. However, Thresh is still threatening that point. Uh, Syndra did and... blow a revive, ran down, and died. And I think uh, Icing is just trying to stall for as much time as he can up here while Icing was being a trooper. We had Sam jumping the castle and trying to go for the execute. Missed the range a little bit, walked into Pantheon Spears, and died. 
He almost managed to get movement as well, but the talent came around to protect his teammates. Three points. Four group simulator. And that is going to be a BFT drop down onto Sifu. The bleed in the BFT might be enough. No, he is going to be able to stay alive. He should back out of that as fast as he can. Very nice explode on the ultimate by Maokai. Able to finish that off. Meanwhile, Thresh was taken down, but by Syndra and Vi, and Syndra is going to die. Syndra is pretty much dead. Good night, Syndra. <laughs> and Vi coming back down making clean. Sure business was finished in the bot lane, decided to walk off, and now he's going to fight a Pantheon, which might be a questionable decision without his ultimate. But he had brought Ignite to the party. Oh, he does have that Ignite. So he's winning this duel. We got the Ice and gets the Relic and punishes him. Or thinking auto attackers can beat Pantheon. Yep. Top lane, we just have a poke war going on. Tree is throwing saplings, bindings are being thrown, posturing is happening, and no, until a bind is hit, I do not believe that anybody is going to go in. Talon comes around the corner, throws on, throws on the tree, gets a little bit of damage. Tree decides to turn around, gets hit Talon with the binding from the back line. But it's not enough. Yeah, Tree manages oh, to go down, not enough damage getting in there to follow up with him, but they still do have bot lane, so it is a 3 cap uh, right now, so getting that top point wasn't too much priority. Oh, excellent Bond, play. Playing the fly out of Vault Breaker brings the exhaust to the table. Nobody is holding the turret, so Zounds is just going to tank it up. He gets pulled, and the auto attacks are going to come through, and he's going to go down, so I'm managing to go one for one. And that was three people down there, and he still managed to take one with him, so very nicely done with that play there. And Morgana coming down bot just to hold it in case something tries to push, but it doesn't seem like they want to. And it's going to go right back up to this top fight. The issue for Farming Group, however, is there is an Amumu being perpetually healed by an Italy with a Chalice on the, the Dominion map, so she's never really going to go out of mana. And they are able to continue just wave flare after wave flare. Oh, and see everyone coming up from the back, so they decide to engage right on the Pantheon. He is going Beautiful. to get Beautiful! A Mumu ult comes through, hits all four people, but the spear flies wide. They, however, are on the point. I don't think it's going to be enough. Heal's still coming through. They need the Vi. And here she comes! Sifu manages to take out the Amumu. The Vi is currently fighting the Maokai and the Morgana. Spear hits. Sam goes in the cat form. Voltbreaker being charged. And Sifu is going to go down. They're still going to hold this top point. Spear almost hits. Binding does. Maokai decides to go in. Down. Making a very questionable decision to charge that Voltbreaker for so long. Almost loses Italy. But still manages to pull it out in the end. Yeah, I, I think once more. And gets the spear up, oh. and the vile assault and battery being charged. They pick off the Morgana. Pantheon on come, um, comes down, and I think they are finally going to. Sam with the shoot almost got away. Talon should most definitely pick up Sifu from this, but the questionable way in which he did it means he lost the point and his life. Yep, and it looks like I don't know if Pantheon's going to be able to hold this one out. He is running to the Morgana to block some of the magic damage from the mummy, and he will be able to survive that Black Shield saving the day. Black Shield and the insurance Morgana ulti being blown. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Sauron he just killing this Syndra. Syndra with the disrespect. The Syndra burst. And tried to all alive. in without a Void Staff on a Thresh with three fully built MR items and a fully stacked width. He had 200 magic resist. BFT I mean. and Syndra combo did not take him down. It was, that was something. And Vi trying to check that bush, but Sauron is like, nah, I'm already gone. We have Sai setting up trying to snipe Sam with a stray binding, but it's not going to hit. Oh, and Zounds pushing a little bit too much, running into the LeBlanc and Thresh. He is going to go down there in that bot lane. Meanwhile, Pantheon's going to try to take a fight with Talon, wins out the trade. Sam jumps in his melee form on Nidalee, not, and it was very ill-advised. He gets himself killed as Muma tries to greed for Stein on the point and doesn't get anything. That's just going to be a 3 for 0 with the Rise Pop. Oh my now gosh! in the bottom lane, Sauron, Sauron in these the plays! Auto attack. He gets a very long max range death sentence as Sifu running out of mana is probably going to stop this push. But Sauron's auto attack, and just the presence of Sifu being there might be enough, but they seem like they're going to trade one for one. No, Zounds gets away. Yeah, they did uh, take a little bit of tower damage there. That sealed their fate down in that bot. 
<clears throat> this is a very, very even game as we're 12 minutes in off only 20 points of Nexus health difference. Whoever has the top point seems to be having the advantage as it's very, very hard to catch somebody. Yeah, and it looks like Mummy. with the Q knocking Sam out of the Morgana binding raid was, however, unfortunate, but they still get the Amumu. So the front line is gone right now, but um, they still do have Vi and Talon, both of which deal heavy amounts of damage. Ooh, and Morgana is finding herself in a place, and that is going to be a cat jumping on you and blowing you up, Morg. Oh. While the top fight is going well for bench warmers, Sifu got himself killed for the Syndra, but the Syndra most definitely... Ooh, she manages to get the stun out and get away from Sauron. Those flame mechanics, man. I tell ya. The Amumu here to save the day. Syndra doing very, very well with her spacing, making sure to deal significant damage, gets the other stun, and pulls out the kill on Sauron. Very, very good play if she had the 1v1 Sifu cap the point and eat a death sentence in order for that all to be possible. Yeah, so very nicely done by her managing to keep that up. She does have her Void Staff now, so she's going to be able to do a lot more damage. Oh man, in LeBlanc, running into that uh, Vi, just chilling out in the bushes LeBlanc there. running into Vi, Talon running into Pantheon, and the Amumu, all, um, Amumu bandage from downtown lands. Pantheon goes down, Maokai cleans up the challenge. Pantheon did Vi revive though. LeBlanc, and the Pantheon all comes back in. Two-man Volt Breaker, but I think it is time to leave for Bench Warmers as those were very, very, very close exchanges. Sam should be able to hold top point for very long if angles permit, and he is going to manage to get behind the point. He should be safe. And it looks like Talon is there to back him up. No other revives were popped, but the Vi and Mummy are on their way back up right now. So currently it is a 2v2, but uh, those Nidalee Spears... They Spears still twice. hitting traps for max last, so these heals will keep people up in fights for a very, very long amount of time. Movement coming through the center. Sifu most definitely going off to kill the Syndra and get quest. But what will be will there be any repercussions for it? Another max range spear lands onto the tree. Syndra is running, hits the BFT and the ult, almost dropping Sifu where he stands, didn't feel confident in the amount of damage he could take. He decided to leave Sauron. Trying to pull Syndra into his ultimate, but fails and goes down. Movement over here with the Pantheon. Forgot the icing. There's a little exchange over at the speed try. Nobody is at top point right now. The wave is pushing for bench warmers as they are five players to four right now. Downs gets chunked by Sifu. Forgot the icing. Goes in. Picks up Downs. Talon was trying to be very ambitious going into the back line, but also fails. So they go two for zero right there. And Oof. Sifu once more. Those Nidalee Spears, they're hurting. You can just see them getting tossed into the fights, chunking people down. They, it's uh, along with the traps and the map control. They're trying to get the good positioning here to keep them from getting up to top. So that way LeBlanc has some time to cap it. Very nicely done managing to catch that Nidalee. And they are going to be able to chase on this Amumu. Nope, they're just going to let him go. Sam significantly underestimating Glass Pantheon damage. Thought he could take a hit, but was incorrect. As now, Farming Group has complete and utter control of the jungle. Binding flies right. Maokai goes in, forgot the ice and gets chunked. Down oh. decides to alt side Sentinel while Sam is dealing with himself. Talon's still alive. Sentinel goes down. The Blanc comes in, chunks Sam, distorts back out. Talon trying to catch her with the end of some damage. But it looks like the Bruisers are just going to clean up this Maokai. Sifu trying to look for a way in. Oh, nice Ooh, dodge man. the mummy ult. With the second missed mummy ult of the game, not going to quite catch Sifu. On um, Sauron. Bandage and... flies left. Sauron trading a lot of damage with Syndra in the bottom lane. But now it's Zounds in movement trying to fight Sifu Calvin for control of this top point. It is a 2v1. Sifu is going in. It looks like a 2v1 when Pantheon comes in to say, hey. No 2v1s Sifu. on my watch. And it looks like bench warmers are going to take this time to regroup, being at low health. All right. Syndra has completed the Holy Trinity. The cap, the BFC, and the Void Staff are done. And Sauron still does not actually have sustain. So as long as she plays the range game, she should be able to kill him over time, as long as he does not continuously get Relic. Yeah, Sauron... Major downfall of Thresh right now. He just doesn't have that sustain to keep himself up in the lane. And... Now Zounds is being very forward. Catches a silence. Does not get the stare. So he doesn't lose too much health. He's still in fighting condition. Spears 
aren't hitting, so I do not believe bench warmers can fight yet. No, nope. but... they're gonna need to wait. You can't engage when you have Nidalee on your team. You need to get those spears. You need to get that poke. But the longer she takes, oh my goodness! In the meantime. Sauron actually managed to take down the Syndra, but she did have Revive. I don't know if he's going to be able to get this point neutralized. He is not. But that was just a morale boost for Meanwhile, everyone. Meanwhile, now Lewis, pulling the Maokai all the way into the back of the team. Talon trying to assassinate somebody by himself. Isn't managed to do a dive to Pantheon. Pantheon dies a little bit afterwards. Zaun's trying to fight Tifu, gets juked out. Morgana all only lands on a Mumu. Zaun's looks like he's going to go down. The target focus just isn't there as the rest of the team went to kill the Maokai. Tifu blowing all of his mana to get in. Binding is going to hit, but this Amumu is being healed, and he's going to go back in. Gets the LeBlanc. Sam still low on mana. Another Binding hits. Matt the portal going in, and the Execute on Tormented Soil is going to pick up the kill. Bot lane, however, Sauron. He managed to kill Syndra after she revived. She came back down, tried to fight him again, and Sauron was like, nah, I ain't having none of that, and killed her again, and then managed to get the point. Three line players not knowing that the Thresh with Souls does deal damage. He <laughs> has 320 souls, like I said, 280 on hit magic damage, along with the high attack speed from Natural Scoop and the MR threat from within, is destroying people. They seem to have opted for a lane swap. The Swarm Syndra coming top, Pantheon out coming down, killing Talon. Syndra destroys Side Sentinel, almost gets picked off by Sifu. Spear hits Sifu in the face. He's forced to distort away. Syndra coming out with a Mumu. They will most certainly get the top point. However, nobody can fight the Thresh. The Thresh is on fire. There's a killing spree in the bottom lane, and Bitch Warmers just can't come up with an answer. The, he is hit critical mass. He is at the point where you just cannot kill him. If you try to duel him, he's going to absolutely destroy you. His on hit right now with his uh, passive flay is doing 256 extra damage. That is insane. Alan goes in on Sifu, misses his rake, gets absolutely obliterated. The Thresh is auto attacking for days. The root comes down, the spear misses, and there goes a double kill for Sarai. Oh, the hook Ooh, just barely missing. Barely whiffs. But Bitch Warmers have one saving grace. They are holding on to top point. Yep, they do have that top, but their bot is gone. So they do have the 3-cap, and the pause is going to come out. Pause comes in as Maokai takes a Sinja stun from over the top with Forgot the Icing coming in for the flank. Oh man, this game is so close right now. And Thresh, Thresh has hit critical mass. They really need to do something about that. Pantheon is able to blow up targets if he can get onto them. Talon... Um, actually going for Tripen, it seems. He's got that uh, second Brutalizer going. And then LeBlanc does have BFT. She has her Sweeper to see Talon. She's got that Haunting Guys, but no Void Staff yet. What do, what do you think about that? I, I with Especially with a lot of the MR popping up on the enemy team, Void Staff would have been probably a good pick right about now. Well, it would have been nice to have, but my biggest concern is for this Pantheon. If this Syndra continues to swap top and somebody, anybody, can hold against this Thresh bottom lane, that Pantheon has not opted for any MR. He has even forgotten a Hex Drinker in favor of the Sanguine Blight. He is not going to be able to exist if the Syndra even so much as presses R on him in these top fights. If Bitch Warmers can roll these top fights so hard with this bot lane farm Syndra that they can press onto the mid, they might have a chance in this game. Well, the other downside is Sauron isn't going to just sit down bot and let you know the enemy team push. He's going to be pushing himself over onto the midpoint. Uh, I really think they have to send Nidalee to keep Thresh busy, because he doesn't necessarily have to um, fight Thresh. He just has to keep him from capping the point. So he can wave I... clear on the point with Cougar and keep him from capping with Spears. There is no way, I'm sorry, that he can wave clear on Cougar for him, because Thresh is going to walk up and kill him with auto attacks. He can't be in range of Thresh's auto attacks in order to wave clear, which is why Syndra being down there for the majority of the game was really good. If that Nidalee tries to cook her from the wave and Thresh walks up to her, Thresh will actually probably four-shot her at this point in the game. Well, As let's silly see. as this sounds to most people, that Thresh will probably four-shot you. Oh yeah, no, he, he has... Uh, I have two buffs on here. One is incorrect and one is correct. He has 348 souls, and this one says 256, but 348 souls. Um, passive deals 579 magic damage, and it is... The value is equal to total souls collected plus up to 200% of AD. Wow. That right. is that is a lot. 
Thresh's first auto is why it's up to 200% AD. And Thresh gets a buff called Soul Glutton at every t interval he re reaches 256 gold. And he'll get another one of those buffs. And it's just, it's just, it's just a cosmetic thing. You know how Ash and Sejuani all have their little things. When he harvests that many souls, he gets that little extra icon and says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty big right now, basically. Yeah, right now he has 261 extra ability power and armor. So for anyone in chat wondering why didn't Thresh build any armor, well, if you look at he his armor all... stat right now, he is sitting at 299 armor Summoner without any armor connected. in his items. So that is pretty pretty ridiculous. Welcome to Infinite Scaling Champions. Infinite Scaling oh. Champions. While we're in this pause, I'm taking a look at the chat. People, people are being surprised. We've got people calling Sun and OP spammer. You know, spamming Lucian when Lucian was OP. Lucian, I don't think ever crossed the threshold of OP in the game. I don't think he ever crossed the threshold of tier A. Oh, come on, Fancy. He's okay he's on the right. A. On the right players, he could be considered tier A, but in no, a general no, no. populace, there are A tier AD carries Lucian and Jinx and Tagma. Jinx being, I'll give it being to you. B tier. Jinx, I'll give it to you. I, I I would say Lucian's really strong, but at the same time, it comes down to the argument of the player behind the champion. I mean, oh, I've, I've, we assume that everybody on every champion is playing a champion to their maximum potential. Okay. Champion is an A tier champion. Then in that case, yes, I would give you definitely the Lucian. Uh, but most of the time, when you hear the OP talk and the tier list, it's it's things like LeBlanc, where it's so easy to just combo people really quick and blow them up instantly, and that's where it uh, comes out. <clears throat> now, we have a little argument in the chat. We're like, who beats Thresh Bot? And we have Corblock coming in here being like, you gotta pull out the old school Mauser. AD Mauser. Because Thresh... Thresh can't particularly deal well with his minions. But you know what? There's something that fixes that problem, a little item called Hurricane. Now, I honestly would love to see, after this Dominion tournament is over, a 1v1 between Sauron and Corval, Thresh v. AD miles behind. I don't know if they can make that happen or not, but... We, we may be able to make that happen. I don't know. If, if Corval is uh, down to do it, then I'm for sure we could get that going. Um, we also do have a Parkhurst who can play Malzahar really well against, uh, well, he can play Malzahar really well, so we could try that match up as well if they want to see it. No, this is a, it's a show match or something, I might, you know. Actually, what are you two doing here? Yeah, why are you guys here? You can't, you're supposed to be in the game focusing. Well, I guess it's still paused. Some, can, can you enlighten us about what has happened? Why is the game paused? We saw the talent disconnect. Yeah. You're the only person who's getting DDoSed right now. I, I can't actually, like, bring up all chat on, on stream, because even though we do have friendly banter back and forth, it sometimes gets a little rude, even though it is in good fun. <clears throat> you know, there's people, many people listing a lot of champions who may or may not be Thresh in the bottom lane, but with all due respect, Thresh isn't that fully explored in the bottom lane. Sauron's really the only person I know who takes him bottom. I know a couple... I take him top. I know there's a couple of the people who are general OP spammers and who are moving to the next champion that they think is going to be on the upper echelon. So they play a little bit of Thresh now and then. But there are not many th bot lane Thresh players. And in this day and age, there aren't that many good bottom lane players that still see people fighting solo too. Yeah, and you know, I've been playing him top a lot, and I actually think he's pretty okay up top. Like, he doesn't seem to have this this hyperscaling power that he does get from bot lane. Uh, top lane, you know, you have to be that frontline initiator for your team. You can still get that wit's end. It's a really strong item on him. Um, but you do still sometimes need to get that armor if you're not getting the souls like you should. But uh, yeah, I, I it's, it's still so new, because Thresh was the worst champion on the map. And this change has turned him into one of the best champions on the map. So everyone's kind of like, okay, we've never played Thresh before. What is he good against? What's good against him? How do we play against this? And that's why you saw a lot of teams earlier banning him out. And, it, and it's very important to note that there, there are people in the community who said, you know, Thresh might be bad now, but the day is going to come when he's going to get those Dominion-specific, you know, changes that would make his very SR-centric passive become... You know, something that could be 
really applied because it was absolutely useless before. Right now it's probably a little bit too strong and needs to be toned down. But what people forgot is Thresh is a support. And all supports when given money are OP. That, that is a fact. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody can dispute that there is a support in this game that when they give them gold is not B tier or higher. No, yeah, that's exactly true. Uh, I mean, when um, back in, what was it, season three, where supports on Summoner's Rift were completely ward bots, and we have supports over here on Dominion who were top picks, you know, you would see Sona and Janna and Lulu and all these champions that you're just like, well, supports suck on Dominion, and it, it's just they don't realize it because they've never had gold on the supports yet. Especially with these support balance changes coming out, we saw we see a lot of Lulu in LCS, in OGN, and in various places these days. We've been playing Lulu since she first came out. We've been playing, you know, things like Jay since they first came out. But supports are one thing that really, and people are picking up on Morgana now. She's a support-like champion. She's also very, very, very strong against as a counterpick. She is very strong. Yeah. It's uh, it's very interesting how, how different things are between the two game modes. Because, you know, you see on Summoner's Rift and you're like, oh, okay, there's some some pretty good champions over there. They have, uh, what is it right now, Renekton is really strong over there. But over here, he's he's sort of an iffy pick. You know, he can do good in bot, he's not that great top. But in Summoner's Rift, he's he's a go-to. He's, he's a top laner that you need to know. Same with Shyvana, you know. And it, it's just very... It's very cool to see the difference in the two maps and the different metas and champions that come to power. Now don't get us wrong, champions like Shyvana and Renekton do transition fairly decently into Dominion. You don't see a lot of Shyvana because there are things that, you know, Morgana's here, you know, LeBlanc's here. She gets rooted for days mm -hmm. and she can't really stick to things. So Shyvana's another one of those things that when paired with a champion like Nami... Shivana and Nami as a duo are absolutely terrifying. When you give certain champions the ability to unleash their full potential, you can see how strong that they really, really are. Yeah, it, it's, it really just takes... Oh, and actually the pause is being unpaused. We're going to get back into gonna, this game here. Back to this game, Maokai is stunned. Icing decides to stun the Amumu. The ult goes down. Icing gets obliterated. Sonya's is popped. The Syndra is going to die immediately out of it. Sifu Calvin gets a Mumu ulted and also dies. Sam's coming out, wrong range spear hits Maokai. And we have the heal coming out. Sam opting to go into cat form to chase people down. He might get hit by a stray binding. There it is. Jumps out of the tormented soil. Maokai goes down to banish hawks and the chase is still going. Talon is also coming up to this top lane but decides to change his decision. Oh. Sam landing one more max range spear. Pantheon, oh, however, Pantheon. And Sam gets the kill, hops out, gets away, Banish cause, Exhaust being thrown down, Pantheon with the crits, not enough to pick up the kill just yet, Spear coming down, is the heal gonna be up in time, Banish goes in, but Mumu dies in the process, chain flying left, but Distortion in the queue gets the kill, and Syndra going down again. Finally taking down Thresh, though. He was sitting there, just... Vi came down to try to stop him, killed her. And then, you know, they, they actually needed to get a good force down there to take him down. 38 seconds on the clock. Bench warmers need to make something happen if they want to win this game. It looks like they're going to try to go for five. Coming down, getting a chain, and avoiding the bolt breaker at the same time. Zalan's blowing Yomus to not lose any more health, deciding to run away. 30 seconds on the clock, Spear hits Pantheon in the brush, who runs over a trap. Everybody vying for a position on the map, Spear flies by top lane. Sifu trying to get Storm Buffs down, thinking about contesting, this is a terrible <laughs> idea. Change what are you doing up. trying to get the Storm Buffs? Zounds, <laughs> leave him! Leave him! Down. Oh man, they need to do something and they need to do it now. Zounds just went down. Syndra fully pushed up. And Amumu gets a two-man ult on the point and blows all of his damage. They manage to get out of the Morgana ult and get the kill. Sifu completely oom. 12 seconds on the clock. Malachi takes down Amumu. Sounds the... his bot lane, and they might be running for that bot point. I don't know if they're going to have enough time to cap oh. it down there. They need to cap this Not top. Not have enough time to get across the point. I do believe that is going to be the game. And that is going to be game. It is going down. 
to Farming Group Simulator 2004 in a 22-minute, 30-second matchup. Boom. Man, that game was intense. Very nicely done by both teams. That was uh, honestly one of the better Dominion games I've seen in so long. Just tons of fun to watch. Oh, man. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for, we got to check that damage dealt by Thresh. I am so curious to see what he managed to pull out there. And actually, Nidalee going to be at the top, followed by Pantheon, followed by... I think that's LeBlanc. Yes, it is LeBlanc. Pantheon and then Syndra to LeBlanc. Very, very close tie, but like very, very close fight between the AP carry, secondary AP carries, I should say, of both teams. Mm hmm. But man, that, that, that's some impressive stuff from that Thresh bot lane. Once he got that hyperscaling going with those souls, it, it became very tough to deal with. As you could see, Vi went bot to try and handle him, got blown up. Syndra just switched to top because she said, guys, I cannot take that anymore. I think it took Syndra and Talon to take him down, and then Syndra still ended up dying. It was a very, very crazy endgame there. Now, I know there was definitely a lot of disrespect by that Syndra managing to somehow get caught by Death Sentence or just getting casually walked at by a Thresh. Because she does have the range to perpetually stay safe in that lane. It was probably very, very good play you know, on Sauron's part, catching some Death Sentences on the Syndra, which led to her untimely demise. However, we did not manage to catch them with all the action that we saw up top lane. Yeah, top lane was just so back and forth, so many fights breaking out all the time. It was really hard to get down to bot at the last second to see like what happened, how the engages were going. Um, I was trying to keep an eye on it out of the corner of my eye. All I was able to see was I see the two characters' like heads right next to each other on the mini-map, and then Syndra's vanishes. So, <clears throat> Oh, man. All right, well, chat, we should have our finals coming up here. I'm pretty sure it is going to be Clueless versus uh, Farming Simulator. But let me refresh our page here, and we will check out which one it is actually going to be. Let me give you guys a better view that of that. That is most definitely correct. We will have Clueless going up in a best of three against Farming, Simula Farming Group Simulator 2004. Oh, 2014, excuse me. I actually highlighted the name and looked at it now. 2014. Farming Group Simulator. All right. Well, we are here for a few more minutes to uh, answer any questions that the chat may have. That was a pretty intense game. If you guys have anything like, why did they do this? Why did they do this? Why do you do this in Domin uh, Dominion? Feel free to ask it. We can answer that for you. And uh, we will get our finals match set up here in just a second. Also, if you're interested in actually joining the tournament, whether it's you know, casual fun, you can hang out every now and then on Saturday, or if you actually want to attempt to take the grand prize, you know, first place gets you a $20 RP and a triumphant rise skin, you will have to go to mobafire.com, and you can find us on the tournament section. We have our weekly listings. If you make an account there, you can definitely sign up your team and come join us off on the Crystal Scar. Yep, and uh, also, if you guys ever want to... Uh, join in with some of the Dominion chat and uh, hang out, so to speak, in our chat channel here. We have the Dominate Dominion uh, group chat channel. If you ever want to join this, you click down in the bottom right here, view chat room control, click on this plus, and simply type in Dominate space Dominion into the box. Or is it, is there space? Dominate Dominion. There is no space. Don't join space Dominate Dominion. It does not exist. Join it without a space. And this is where all the Dominion players come to hang out, chat about Dominion, chat about life, get into very philosophical arguments with each other. It's good stuff. <clears throat> Alright, and we do have our next game getting ready, so we will cut to our commercial and we will get in on that.